This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. In Florida, the death toll has risen to 12, with nearly 150 people still missing, following the catastrophic collapse of the 13-story apartment building in Surfside, right next to Miami Beach. On Thursday, President Biden scheduled to visit the site with Dr. Biden, his wife. The state attorney for Miami-Dade County has announced she would ask a grand jury to examine what may be the deadliest collapse of a residential building in U.S. history. A 2018 inspection found the building had abundant cracking and spalling in its foundation, with engineers pointing to design flaws and insufficient waterproofing. Less than three months before the collapse, the president of the Condominium Association warned residents that the damage had, quote, gotten significantly worse. Just last week, a pool contractor took photos underneath the building's pool deck, showing water damage and cracked concrete. While investigators have not determined the exact cause of the collapse, the disaster raises new questions about how rising sea levels will impact oceanside buildings in Miami and other cities. We go now to Coral Gables, Florida, where we're joined by Harold Wanless, professor of geography and urban sustainability at the University of Miami. He leads a project called The Invading Sea, a collaborative effort by news organizations across Florida to address the threat of sea level rise. Dr. Wanless, you say soon, in fact, Miami will be underwater. But talk about that relevance today to what we are seeing in all of the carpet coverage of this catastrophe that has taken place. Rarely do we hear the words climate change. Right. Well, um, since the building was built, there was has been about seven, eight inches of further sea level rise, which is very fast. But if that building was built properly, um, I would be surprised that that would have a major effect. If we look to the future, which maybe we can do in a minute, that would be important. I think uh, the problem with this building is there may be some design and there may be certainly some maintenance problems. But um, I think they need to look very carefully at the elevation of the base of the parking garage, which you go down to go into, I believe. And that was much lower. And um, they also are going to need to look at very carefully exactly what this building was built on. We assumed it was sand of the barrier island overlying rock, but that may not be correct. There's some and evidence that something else was uh, dug out and filled back in, and we need to look at that. But, uh, you know, the reason this is so important is that, that either this is something unique to the building or this is a general problem that all the condos along the coast of the world are going to have to deal with, because certainly there is salt spray, and certainly during exceptional tides you do get salt water into the groundwater. There's often fresh water. But even fresh water on concrete that isn't that that good is is highly corrosive. So yeah. And Dr. Wanless, could you talk about the uh, uh, the impact of salt water uh, uh, on structures? Uh, because we see this in New York City all the time on highways that are right along the water that they're constantly having to repair them because of the corrosive okay. nature of the salt. That's right. And uh, in contrast, um, Flagler built the railroad down to Key West in the early part of the previous century. And uh, he used some German concrete that was designed for salt water. And we do it all the time with bridges and other structures around the world. So, and the problem is, I don't think we're using the proper quality concrete because, you know, it could be in. 20 to 30 years, we could have as, as much as two to three feet of further sea level rise. Ice melt is really accelerating our sea level rise. And so we're, we're really in for it. And so we, we, have to, we have to deal with the question you asked straight up. It's, you know, it's not, well, this is, this is above sea level. No, it's not really above sea level in the near future. And can you talk about Miami, its future? Miami's future? Well, um, because, of the, because we've warmed the ocean, almost all the heat from global warming is in the ocean, uh, because that warmed ocean and the warmed atmosphere is now 
uh, and has initiated and is rapidly accelerating ice melt on both Greenland and Antarctica. We are, as I said, certainly going to be in for a, a two to three foot further sea level rise by mid-century, a mortgage cycle away only. And uh, we could be at, at, at eight to as much as 15 feet by the end of the century. So Miami, well, there's only 3% of, of Miami Dade County is greater than 12 feet above sea level. And, uh, uh, and even at six feet, it's pretty well going to be over later this century. So, uh, but we're building here like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe that's correct. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a hard thing for people to, to think that this hasn't always been here, but, but it hasn't. Sea level just happened to slow down for the last couple thousand years. And so we built like this has always been here. And it, it unfortunately, the barrier island of, of Miami Beach and all the barrier islands of the world are going to be um, inundated, compromised, eroded, uh, storm surged across more aggressively in the in the pretty near future. So. And could you talk about the uh, government policy related to this in places like Miami or New Orleans, that uh, it, it's it's actually to build much more, spend billions on constructing man-made barriers instead of relocating uh, populations and uh, uh, having the whole country have to pay for folks who want to live by the, by the ocean? And we just have 30 yeah, seconds. That's, that's that's a very good question, and it's the same question on, on floodplains, where we're now having more aggressive uh, uh, floods, um, but this is a very fair question, and, and I don't think there's an easy answer for it. The problem with Miami, we live on very porous limestone, so you can't put a, a dike or a levee around us and, and keep the water out. It'll come right up through the, through the rock. 